Imagine waking up on a sunny morning feeling as if you can conquer the world. You pour yourself a delicious cup of coffee and prepare for your day. You feel alert during your classes, productive at your job. You even meet up with some friends for lunch. But as the day unfolds, your energy, once a vibrant crescendo, starts to dwindle like a fading melody. By late afternoon, you feel sluggish and tired, wondering why your mind isn't as focused and alert as it was earlier in the day. The answer lies in the conductor of our life symphony, the mastermind behind these daily rhythmical changes. Every day, our bodies play a musical composition that is 24 hours long. And in orchestra, the conductor helps guide the musicians, sets the tempo, and ensures that each instrument plays in harmony with the rest. In our bodies, this mysterious maestro is called the circadian clock. It is pivotal in determining when we feel at our best and when we might find ourselves in that afternoon slump. Without this biological conductor, our body's daily melody fades away. Our instrumental organs don't know the right tempo and don't function properly. The term circadian comes from the Latin phrase circa diem, which means about a day. The circadian clock is made up of specific proteins that are produced in our cells, and these proteins determine when biological processes happen within a 24-hour day. These proteins go through continuous cycles of increasing and decreasing their cellular levels over the course of a day. For example, one of the circadian clock proteins that I study in my research is called period, or PEER for short. It builds up in our cells at night while we are sleeping, peaking in the early morning hours, and then steadily decreases throughout the rest of the day. And this rhythm repeats every 24 hours. These circadian clock proteins determine when genes in our DNA are used to create cellular products. And nearly 50% of all of the genes in our DNA are regulated by these circadian clock proteins. These proteins regulate processes like insulin release, cortisol and melatonin production, DNA repair, energy production, and cellular division, ensuring that each task is performed at the most suitable time of the day. When they optimize when our genes are used to create cellular products, it allows our bodies to adapt to the various phases of a 24-hour day. When these processes operate smoothly and occur at the right time of the day, it contributes to the overall health and well-being of the cell, and by extension, the entire body. But how do these circadian clock proteins know what time of the day it is? They receive cues from the external environment. For example, the cells in the hypothalamus of the brain detect light. And light, especially natural sunlight, is important in regulating the activities of our circadian clock proteins. When the cells sense light, they adjust the activities of the circadian clock proteins, ensuring that the time on the inside of our body matches the time in the external environment. These cells can also sense when we eat or exercise, telling the circadian clock what time of the day it is. Remember the protein that I study, period or peer? Well, researchers have shown that light stimulation greatly increases the amount of peer in our cells. So if we're exposed to light at times when we shouldn't be, let's say in the middle of the night, when we're endlessly scrolling through all the cute cat and dog videos on the internet, this can change the level of peer production in the cell, and peer will be active at times when it shouldn't be. So these environmental stimuli can impact our circadian rhythms. Now, even with a great conductor, an orchestra can only produce beautiful melodies if each instrument plays their part at the right time. In our bodies, each of our organs plays an instrument in this orchestra. Our heart serves as the percussion section, providing the steady beat for the rhythm of life. The liver acts as the bass, providing the foundational support for the orchestra, 
playing notes of metabolic harmony, and the kidneys, representing the woodwinds, are important in maintaining the balance and filtration of our body's internal fluids, much like the woodwind section adds layers of depth to an orchestra's composition. The rhythm that we observe in blood pressure is one example of this circadian clock coordination. We're all familiar with blood pressure, to varying extents. I'm sure we've all gone to the doctor's office where they take our temperature, and then they wrap that blood pressure cuff around our arm, and they squeeze the heck out of it. Not so much fun. Maybe we even get in trouble for having too high of blood pressure. But what exactly is blood pressure? Blood pressure is the force of blood pushing against the walls of our arteries as our heart pumps the blood around our bodies, delivering oxygen and nutrients to the other organs so they function properly. Blood pressure is measured in millimeters of mercury and is characterized by two values. Systolic blood pressure, the force when the heart contracts, and diastolic blood pressure, the force when the heart is at rest in between beats. As a general rule, ideal blood pressure falls within the range of 90 over 60 millimeters of mercury and 120 over 80 millimeters of mercury. Blood pressure also has a 24-hour pattern. It's lowest that night while we are sleeping, gradually rising upon waking, peaking in the late afternoon hours, and then in the evening, it begins to decline again. And this rhythm repeats every day. Now, these variations in our blood pressure are not random. They are orchestrated by our circadian clock proteins to ensure that our body's needs match its resources. For example, the higher blood pressure that we observe during the daytime corresponds with increased physical activity and metabolic demand, whereas the lower blood pressure at night allows our bodies to rest and recover. Now, most college students probably don't think about blood pressure very often, but it's actually estimated that one in five college students have hypertension. Hypertension is a condition where your blood pressure is consistently elevated throughout the day and or night, which puts a lot of stress on the cardiovascular system. If left uncontrolled, hypertension greatly increases the risk of heart disease, stroke, and other cardiovascular problems. In the pursuit of better understanding and managing hypertension, I'm exploring novel therapeutic targets for cardiovascular disease. It is a mission close to my heart, pun intended, as I believe unraveling the mysteries behind the circadian clock and blood pressure rhythms can pave the way for more effective treatments and preventative measures. Specifically, I study the circadian clock in the kidney, how it regulates kidney function, and how this contributes to our heart health. Remember how I told you the heart pumps blood around the body, delivering oxygen and nutrients to the other organs, like the kidneys? Well, the kidneys also do important things to keep our heart healthy. The kidneys clean our blood, filtering out excess waste and water, and they fine tune the amount of salt in our bodies. Without our kidneys, this excess waste and water would build up, making our hearts work harder or blocking heart function at all. And while our bodies do need some salt to function properly, too much salt can lead to high blood pressure, which puts stress on the heart. So our kidneys help remove this excess salt from our bodies, ensuring that our hearts aren't damaged. This is why in the clinical setting, kidney disease and heart disease are very closely linked to each other. When the circadian clock coordination of heart and kidney function is spot on, it results in a harmonious melody. Your energy levels are high, your mood is stable, your blood pressure rhythms are normal, and your body functions optimally. But let's consider the flip side of this musical analogy. When the conductor, our circadian clock, is out of sync or doesn't follow the score correctly, the music becomes unrecognizable. This desynchronization can manifest in a variety of ways, from sleep disturbances to mood swings, even health conditions like high blood pressure and heart disease. 
In fact, some individuals actually lose their rhythm of blood pressure and are diagnosed with non-dipping hypertension. This is a type of hypertension where their blood pressure stays consistently elevated throughout the night while they are sleeping and does not decrease, which puts a lot of stress on their bodies. These individuals have drastically increased risk for end organ damage, stroke, and cardiovascular disease. Sometimes, this desynchronization can be caused by genetically inherited conditions like insomnia. But in our modern 24-7 lifestyle, a lot of people are disrupting their rhythms through environmental factors. Artificial lighting, smartphones, and other digital devices have become constant companions, often disrupting the natural rhythms our bodies are wired to follow. The consequences of misaligned rhythms are evident. It's important for us to understand how our lifestyle choices can impact our circadian rhythms and, in turn, our cardiovascular health. Some things that are all too familiar to college students, like all-nighters consisting of drinking way too many energy drinks while longing for your comfortable bed, maybe exercising in the middle of the night when you should be sleeping, and the constant hustle and demand required of your academic and social lives, all of which can disrupt natural sleep-wake cycles and potentially blood pressure rhythms. Take, for example, the increased number of cardiovascular events we observe when switching from standard to daylight savings time. A New England Journal of Medicine study reported up to a 24% increased risk for heart attacks following the beginning of daylight savings time. It is a stark reminder that our bodies, much like an orchestra, thrive on consistency and routine. But here's the exciting part. We are not passive listeners in this symphony. We have the ability to set the tempo, encourage harmony, and help our orchestra perform at its best. There are some simple yet effective things that we can do to create harmonious rhythms in the orchestra of our bodily processes by working with our circadian clock proteins and not against them. First, maintaining regular meal times is an excellent way to keep your internal clock in check. When you eat at the same time every day, your circadian clock proteins learn your eating schedule. They will help optimize digestion of your food by telling your stomach and intestinal cells when they should begin preparing for the next meal. We can also work with our clocks by maintaining a consistent sleep schedule, even on the weekends. So during the weekdays, most of us are forced to wake up early for school or work. And then on the weekends, we shut off that morning alarm and sometimes sleep way past sunrise. And while sleeping in a little bit feels pretty good, have you ever noticed that if you get a little too much sleep, you end up feeling sluggish the rest of the day? That's because the activities of your circadian clock proteins were optimized for your weekday schedule, and they are no longer optimized for your new weekend schedule. The time on the inside of your body does not match the time in the external environment, and this disconnect is what makes us feel groggy the rest of the day. This phenomenon is known as social jet lag, which is similar to the type of jet lag we experience when traveling to a new time zone. Avoiding the misalignment of our internal clock due to irregular sleeping patterns is important in supporting our overall health. We can also time our physical activity to optimize the benefits. Researchers have shown that performing exercise at certain times of the day may better align with your particular circadian rhythms, enhancing the results. Now, what specific time of the day is best for you depends on a lot of factors. Keep your focus on maintaining a consistent time for your exercise, ideally not in the middle of the night when you should be sleeping. Diminishing evening light is important as well. Ideally, we want to stop using electronic devices one to two hours before bedtime. 
We can also use blue light filters on our digital devices or wear glasses with blue light filters to reduce the impact of this artificial lighting. Doing both of these things will help our bodies better prepare for bed by allowing it to do things like produce melatonin. We also want to limit late night eating. When we eat in the middle of the night, we're telling our bodies, oh, we're eating. I need to digest and metabolize this food. We must be active. It must be the middle of the daytime. So this will impact our body's natural nightly processes. Finally, start your daily odyssey by embracing the sunrise. Every day, our bodies go on a 24-hour journey that begins when the circadian clock detects the morning sun. So in the morning, go outside, bask in the early morning light. It will energize you and get you ready to conquer your day. In fact, the American Academy of Sleep Medicine and the Society for Research on Biological Rhythms have both emphasized the peer-reviewed evidence highlighting the importance of the morning sun in their effort to advocate for permanent standard time. A number of states are currently considering establishing permanent daylight savings time because they believe it will help our economy. But the vast majority of circadian clock researchers and sleep specialists agree that establishing permanent daylight savings time may do more harm than good. If we were on permanent daylight savings time, this means some areas of the United States would not see the morning sun until 9 a.m. or later, which is correlated with worse health outcomes. Researchers agree, we need to stop switching the clocks. Every time we move the clocks forward and back, we mess with our sleep schedules, we have an inability to focus throughout the rest of the week, and we have to listen to our pets complain that we're not feeding them at the right time. The madness of changing the clocks needs to end. But we should consider establishing permanent standard time, which our bodies are best adapted for. Every one of us can be an active participant in our life symphony. By working with our circadian clock proteins and not against them, we can cr create beautiful melodies in the orchestra of our bodily processes. Our bodies, much like an orchestra, thrive when there's a harmonious collaboration between the conductor, our circadian clock, and the orchestra, our bodily processes. So let's all actively participate in creating harmonious rhythms for a healthier and more vibrant life. Thank you.